Hello everyone and welcome to our video devoted to deploying application to platform as a service with Docker. During this video we will learn how to Dockerize a Cuba app and run it as a container. We will configure a small application, build and deploy it to Docker using Gradle build system, and deploy our image to platform as a service environment. To illustrate all descriptions we will use the sample sales application. It can be downloaded from the Studio Welcome screen, in the Samples tab, or from GitHub. Let's say you're building your app, and once you're done, you want to publish it to the world. You log into your server, build the app, and it doesn't work. Small differences in runtime environments can be incredibly frustrating when trying to get your app running. Docker is one way to keep your runtime environment identical for development, testing, and production. Docker is a tool designed to make it easier to create, deploy, and run application by using containers. Containers allow a developer to package up an application with all the parts it needs, such as libraries and other dependencies, and ship it all out as in one package. Docker combines a lightweight container virtualization with the workflows and tooling that help you manage and deploy your application. It provides a way to run almost any application securely isolated in a container. The isolation and security allow you to run many containers simultaneously on your host. The lightweight nature of containers, which run without the extra load of hypervisor, means you can get more out of your hardware. Today we are going to dockerize the sample sales application and we are going to use the UberJar approach. This is the simplest way to run your Cube application in a production environment. You can build an all-in-one jar file using the Gradle tasks and then you will be able to run the application from the command line using the Java executable. There is no need to use special web services or servlet containers. Simply start your application as an executable. All parameters of the application are defined in the build time, but it can be overridden when running. We will set up monolithic and distributed application configuration. Let's start th with the monolithic. Go to the studio, open the sample sales project, open the project properties section, click the deployment settings button, open the uberchar tab, tick the build uberchar property, single uberchar property is ticked by default. Also, we need to create a logpack configuration file and the custom jetty environment file. Just click the generate buttons on the right. We need to configure custom jetty environment settings. We are going to use standard PostgreSQL container in our application, so we need to change the localhost to Postgres in the database URL field. Click OK to save the settings. Studio adds the build uberchar task to the build gradle file. We can launch this task from the search field in Studio to create the char file. We need to wait for a few seconds while Studio downloads the necessary dependencies and creates the char. We want to create a docker image with this web app. Since our application is written in Java, we will build our image based on OpenGDK. We'll do that using a docker file. A docker file is a text file that contains a list of commands that the docker daemon calls while creating an image. The docker file contains all the information that docker needs to know to run the app. A base docker image to run from the location of your project code, any dependencies it has, and what commands to run at startup. It is a simple way to automate the image creation process. Let's create a docker image folder in our project. Let's go to the idea. Next, we copy the jar file into this folder and create a docker file with the simple instructions. We'll start by specifying our base image using the from keyword. Copy the files we have created earlier in our image by using copy command. The last step is the command for running the application. Use the cmd command to do that. 
Now that we have our Docker file, we can build our image. The Docker build command does the heavy lifting of creating a Docker image from Docker file. Open the terminal from the Docker image folder. Now run the build command. The Docker build command is quite simple. It takes an optional tag name with a T flag and the location of the directory containing the Docker file. The dot indicates the current directory. If you don't have the OpenGDK image, the client will first pull the base image and then create a new image. We will run our application on Docker Compose. Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker application. With Compose, you use a YAML file to configure your application services. Then, with a single command, you create and start all services from your configuration. So we are going to create a Docker Compose YAML file. This Compose file defines two services, Web and Postgres. The web service uses an image that's built from the Docker file in the current directory. Forward the exposed port 8080 on the container to port 8080 on the host machine. The Postgres services uses a public Postgres image pulled from the Docker Hub registry. To start the application, go to the directory of the Docker Compose YAML file and run the following command. After the task is complete, you should be able to open the application at localhost 8080 app. We can log in and open the screen. Let's set up distributed application configuration now. Go to the idea, open build gradle, find the task, we have to make some changes in the build ubichar task manually, so we need to add the following changes to the app properties. Cube.webhostname property defines the host name of the machine on which this application block is running. Cubo.connection URL list property sets middleware server connection URL for client blocks. Kubo web app URL property defines URL of the web client application. Kubo use local services invocation property allows the web client and web portal blocks invoke the middleware services locally. This property should be set to false in our case because we deploy core and web services in the different containers. Kubo trusted client Permitted IP list property defines the list of IP addresses from which the login to the application is allowed. Now run this task to regenerate the chars. Go to the terminal. Let's create two subfolders in the Docker image folder for the web and core jars. We're going to create a separate containers for each jar, so we need to configure two Docker files. We need to create a new Docker file for core. and for the web. Also, we need to change a Docker Compose YAML file and add the separate core and web containers. Copy the jars to the core and web files. Now we need to build the images with the following commands. Now go to the directory of the Docker Compose YAML file and run the following command. After the task is complete, you should be able to open the application at the local host. Mm -hmm. 
I will show you how to build Docker images from a Gradle tasks. There are many Docker plugins for Gradle. I am going to use the Trends Mode Gradle Docker plugin. You can find it here. Now let's talk about Gradle. We have to add the repository where Gradle can be downloaded the plugin from the top of the repositories in the build script block. We need to add the class path to the plugin to the dependencies. To enable Docker plugin at the following line. After that, we will be able to create our own Gradle task to build the Docker image without Docker file. Here we specified the application name and the tag for the new image. Also we add the base Docker image used during building images. In the add file property we define the path to the source jar that will be copied to the image. The last property defines the command for running the application. We will show you the usage of this task on the single Uber char, so we need to change the build Uber char task as follows. Now let's run the task to build the image. After the task is complete, let's run the application using our YAML file. We need to add the new image name to it before we start. So we need to change the docker compose YAML file. Now go to the terminal, go to the directory of the docker compose yaml file and run the docker compose. After the task is complete, you should be able to open the application and login. At the end of our webinar, I will show you how to deploy the Cube application to platform as a service environment using Docker. We will deploy our app to Heroku. Heroku is a cloud platform based on a managed container system with integrated data services and a powerful ecosystem for deploying and running modern apps. Let's assume that you have a Heroku account and Heroku CLI. First, we need to create the app and connect it to the database. After the task is complete, we need to configure the database credentials in the chat.env XML file for the connection to the database created by Heroku. To do that, let's open the Heroku dashboard site, select our project, open the resources tab and select the database. In the newly opened window, open the settings tab and click the view credentials button. Go to the ID and open the chat.env XML file. We have to change the URL, host and database name, username and password. After that, we need to rebuild our uberchar file using the Gradle task. Now copy our new jar file to the docker image package. Also we have to add some changes to our docker file. First of all, we need to restrict the amount of memory consumed by the application. Then we need to obtain the port to the app from the Heroku and add it to our image. As we already knew, all parameters of the application can be overridden when running. So, our docker file will look like the following. We have to do a few more steps. First, we need to set up git with the following commands. Then we log in to the container registry. It's Heroku location for storing images. Then, build the image and push it to container registry. Web is the process type of our application. Now when we run this command, by default Heroku is going to build the image 
using the docker file in the current directory and then push it to Heroku. You will see it right here, it is taking care of that right now and pushing that into the job. So it's going to take a little while, but once everything has been pushed up, then Heroku will take care of setting the port environment variable and then serving up our application. Also take notes and then we are pushing the image and defining the process type. There is some underlying logic that Heroku uses in order to know what to start in our image and that's going to be defined as the entry point to the application. Keep in mind a couple of things. First off, Heroku as a file system is ephemeral, meaning that it will last a very short time and the files will then be recycled and re-instantated to the initial point. So do not count of any of this data being stored in there permanently. Also keep in mind that these Heroku applications are running under free accounts. Therefore, after approximately 30 minutes or so, the application server will go to sleep. The next time you open the application, it may take a few seconds for it to get up and running. When the task is complete, we want to go ahead and view our application, so we need to type the following command. We have to add the app context to the open link. And we can log into our application. The main goal of our video is reached. We have learned how to dockerize a Cuba app and run it as a container. We configured a small application built and deployed to a docker using Gradle build system and we deploy our small application to Heroku. If you have any questions, feel free to post questions in our forum page and be sure you'll soon get an answer. Thanks for watching.